a great warrior, Anakin. But your need to prove yourself is your undoing. Until you overcome it, a Padawan you will still be. Hey, I'm Pineapple, and welcome back to another Obi-Wan Kenobi review, part 5, the episode of Flashbacks. <laughs> this inspired me to look back at my old journey. Even Coconut got in on the action. Those were the days. And the days for Obi and Annie were old training sessions. Can't you feel the nostalgia anticipating the release of the prequel? Ha! <laughs> then you're old. I wasn't even born yet. Thirsty informs Vader that Obi-Wan's on your beam. And Vader makes her Grand Inquisitor. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan bumps into Haja. You remember him? A big Jedi who's nothing but a scammer. Every day he's hustling. Even that fake Jedi charlatan is after Obi-Wan. He's helping to sing the songs of freedom. Vader orders a lockdown. And Thirsty activates Lola to seal the hangar door. Once again, we flash back to Obi-Wan and Anakin, where we learn of Annie's need to kill, which is how Obi-Wan can predict Vader will attack. Stormtroopers swarm the only entrance as they try to blast their way in. After Leia's scene, Obi-Wan's face on the Hunter's hollow app, she mistakenly thinks he is the kidnapper to find Leia, who is not very trusted. Well, that's all changed now. When Roken can't open the roof, Obi-Wan convinces him to let Leia crawl into the vent and fix it. Bill calls Obi-Wan, but Obi-Wan says, click. Bill's at it again, telling Obi-Wan that he feels exposed and may go to Tatooine to look after Luke. I've learned through my many years of experience that when a minor character reveals their backstory, it's never a good sign for them. And poor Tala did just that, as she tells Obi-Wan why she joined the fight against the Empire. As the troopers almost breach the door, Obi-Wan tries to buy time by meeting with the thirsty sister. He quickly realizes that she was a youngling, but not just any youngling. She survived Anakin's slaughter at the Jedi Temple, and she's not following Vader. She's hunting him. She's thirsty for some Vaderade. That makes me rethink everything. Maybe she was good all this time. First, she tries to slaughter some innocent guy to find the Jedi. Then, she cuts him with the hand off, and that leaves Leia alone to get captured by the thirsty sister. Oh, me. Yeah, he was killed by Reba. Did anyone notice that the old woman's hand just got cut off? Yeah, never mind. Thirsty breaches the door, and the battle ensues. Nedby and Tala both go down. As Tala comes down with the MCBSR and sacrifices herself, Obi-Wan gives Haja the very important job of holding his belongings. As Obi-Wan surrenders to Thirsty, he tries to convince her that they can work together to take Vader down, but she's not hearing it. Leia finds the tracker and Lola and opens the hangar. Obi-Wan escapes from the troopers with Darth Vader in pursuit. A transport takes off and looks to escape before Vader uses the force to take it out of the air. But Obi-Wan anticipates this as a smaller transport escapes. With everyone safely on board, the thirsty sister finally gets her chance for revenge. As she attacks the distracted Vader from behind, but he easily stops her every attack. And he strikes her down and reveals that he knew who she was all along. He takes her Grand Inquisitor pin and places it back on the OG. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, Thirsty finds a communicator that Haja dropped. You had one job to do, Haja! I have a bad feeling about this. I give this episode five pineapples out of five. I can't wait for the season finale. Until then, this is Pineapple signing off. We must get word out immediately. So like, subscribe, and share.